In this video, I will show you how to use our radioactive decay simulation in Scratch to learn more about the concepts of radioactive decay, half-life, and how geologists use them to measure the age of samples, check out the link in the video description. In this video, we're going to focus on the Scratch code and how to use the simulation. Here's how the simulation works. When I click the green flag, the stage fills up with 100 parent isotopes. These are atoms that have not decayed into their daughter isotope yet. Again, to learn more about the underlying scientific concepts and what the words parent and daughter isotope mean, check out the link in the video description. Each time I click the next button, the simulation effectively rolls a die for each isotope by selecting a random number. Depending on a range that you set, each isotope has a certain probability of decaying from a parent to a daughter isotope each time I click the button. Let's zoom in and look at the code, and there are really only two blocks you need to worry about here, and they each have a comment attached to them that explains what they do. The first is this pick random one to six block. So this is selecting the range of the random numbers that the code will pick for each isotope each time you click the next button. Selecting random numbers between one and six is like rolling a six-sided die, but you can change this to whatever you want. For example, selecting random numbers between one and 10 would be like rolling a 10-sided die. For now, I'm going to change that back to six. The next is this if random number greater than five block. This is what will determine when the isotope will decay. So the isotope will only decay if the random number is greater than five. So if you compare that to the possible range of values, which is one to six, the only number in this range that is greater than five is going to be six. So again, think of rolling a six sided die. This is like saying the isotope will only decay if I roll a six. So on each individual roll or each time I hit the next button, it does this calculation for each isotope individually each one has a one in six chance of decaying from a parent isotope to a daughter isotope. So if I start the simulation over, you can see what that means. Each isotope only has a one in six chance of decaying each time I click the button. So the decay is pretty slow. Each time I click the button, most of the isotopes remain as parent isotopes. Now let's look at what happens if I change this to greater than three. So now, the isotope will decay if it rolls a four, five, or a six. All of those numbers are greater than three. So that is going to give it a three out of six or overall 50-50 or 50% 50 chance of decay. So if I rerun the program, wait for the screen to fill up with those parent isotopes. Now, when I click the next button, you can see that about half of the isotopes decay every single time. So the overall rate of decay is much faster. At each time step, the program displays the remaining number of parent isotopes and the total number of daughter isotopes. You can record these numbers and use them to plot the number of isotopes versus time and then use that plot to find the half-life. Instructions for doing that are again in the written instructions, which you can find linked in the description of this video. If you are interested in more about how the Scratch program works, the entire program is based on just two sprites. One for the isotopes has two different costumes that are just two different colored circles. I started with blue for the parent isotopes and then red for the daughter isotopes, but you can go in here to the costume editor and change those colors or use other symbols or other sprites if you would like. And then there is a second sprite just for the next button that broadcasts the next message and increments the time when you click on it. But most of the code is over here in the isotope sprite where there is a nested loop that creates clones of the sprite initially. So that is how you get this 10 by 10 grid of 100 sprites. And then there is this when I receive next block of code that is executing when you click the next button. And again, that's what we looked at earlier. That is generating the random numbers and deciding whether each sprite should decay. And if it should decay, then it switches to the costume for the daughter isotope. To make a copy of this code for yourself and to see written instructions for the project with all of that explanation about half-life, radioactive decay, and isotopes, again, remember that you can find all of that linked in the description of this video. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, including a bunch more that you can do with Scratch, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, 
www.sciencebuddies.org.